dedicated to the strength of the nation, now heard on more than 1,000 radio stations. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring George Montgomery and the Manhattan Mauler, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here is your producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your motion picture favorites appear in plays we know you'll enjoy. That outstanding and popular performer of the cinema, George Montgomery, is our proudly we hail star. You'll hear George as the ambitious prize fighter Terry McGee in the story titled The Manhattan Mauler. We'll raise the curtain on Act One right after this brief message from Wendell Niles. Veterans, there are many opportunities for you in a regular Army career. First of all, the Army pay scale is higher than ever. Then you have your choice of several units, both at home and abroad. And many of you will be able to re-enlist in non-commissioned grades up to staff sergeant. Yes, veterans, there are innumerable advantages in a U.S. Army career, and you hold a favored position. Ask for complete details at your local U.S. Army recruiting station right away. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Manhattan Mauler, starring George Montgomery as Terry McGee. The big town has many fabulous stories hidden within its rivers of humanity and its man-made canyons of cement and concrete. But none more fabulous than the story of Terry McGee, boxer. Handsome Terry McGee, with the Irish smile and the Irish temper, who never regretted anything in his young life except the fact that he had once posed for, of all things, a man's corset ad. Yes, Terry was quite a fabulous character. I'll accept that until a better word comes along. But don't mention that course of that if you'd like your friends to recognize you the next time you meet them. That ad gave me trouble, it did. I remember I was fighting a preliminary over at the West Side Club. 25 bucks a throw they paid. And eh, not bad dough. I was in the dressing room. Sammy Lane was with me. Now, promise me, kid, tonight, don't get mad. Sure, sure. Don't lose your head in there. Okay, okay. Because when you lose your head, kid, you know what happens. Boom, 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 boom. You're true. I'll lay off, will you? you? Talk to me like I'm a monkey. Well, just who do you think you are, Joe Lewis? I'm a potential champion. Yeah. Should I so desire to be. Fortunately, my talents run in so many other directions, I don't have to rely on such a strenuous way of making my livelihood. Is that so? I dare say there have been others in the game who followed a more intellectual path. Gene Tunney, for one. Oh, you're right in there with Gene Tunney, no less. Well, I'm writing my book, you know. Five minutes! So you're writing a book. Well, listen to me, cocksure young friend. You better keep a cool head when you get in that ring or you'll think you've been hit with a typewriter. Well, if it isn't the smiling Irishman, eh? Hello, small timer. Uh, mind if I wipe that smile off your face? <laughs> You're a little slow with that left, aren't you, Smoey? Uh, you find out. By the way, I seen you in that corset there. Uh... Lay off that. Ah, oh, you look sweet. Why, you are... Watch out, get... watch out! <laughs> well, that was short and sweet, and look at that eye. But I warned you... Forget it. Where's my dough? I gotta be moving. Yeah, here you are. 10, 20, 25. Where are you going? I got a big date at the store club with a debutante I just happened to meet the other day. Yeah? Yeah. She's got eyes as big as stars. And she thinks that I'm the only one that ever existed in this whole great big universe. <laughs> Hello, sugar. Hey, you're on time. Sure. But then you usually are. Come on, let's dance. All right. You come to Dreamland often? Well, uh, I'm one of their better customers. <laughs> oh, Terry. What? What's wrong? Oh, I just got a good look at your eye. It's swollen. <laughs> it's nothing. I fought tonight. They didn't hurt you, did they? Hurt me? 
<laughs> Never. I wouldn't want anyone to hurt you. You wouldn't? No. You know, yeah, I kind of like the way you said that. Really? Yeah. Say, uh, where'd you tell me you worked? Uh, over in Jersey. What doing? Oh, I'm a clerk in a factory that makes <laughs> baby rattles and toys. <laughs> you don't say. Mm-hmm. It, it isn't a very glamorous job. Well, a job's a job. <laughs> That's what I thought. You're a swell dancer, Terry. Thanks. Hey, you're not bad yourself. I'm not bad at all. Yes, Nancy was all right. Kind of got under my skin. Sweet little kid. That's why I started going with her. We used to sit up on the roof over at the flat where she lived. Tell me more about yourself, Terry. Well, ever since I was a kid, I, I was always executive-minded. So I decided I wouldn't mind running a fleet of cabs. And I went to work for this company. Oh, very good. And I didn't mind starting at the bottom, a hack driver. But after three weeks, what do I find out? What? The president of the company owned 70% of the stock. What chance was there for me? Oh. Ah, so I had to leave. And then I'd done a little fighting around, but <laughs> I don't go in for that racket. Oh, I'm glad. And then uh, I wanted to be an author. And now I am a real author. I'm writing a book. Terry, no. Oh, Nancy, it's got everything. It's a fight story. It's called The Manhattan Mauler, based on a lot of my own experiences. What drama I'm packing into it. Terry, you're so talented. And I'm so proud of you. You are? Uh-huh. Nancy. Yes, Terry? Nancy, we're uh, going to get married. All right, Terry. Come here. I guess I'm permitted to kiss my bride-to-be. Well, I... I guess you are. <sighs> Do you think we can find a preacher tonight? Oh, I think so. One who will marry us for about, uh, five dollars? Sure. <laughs> You'll have to lend me a dollar. Oh, Terry. <laughs> moved into a little two-room apartment that was the mansion of mansions. By agreement, Nancy continued working over in the baby rattle factory in Jersey while I finished my book. The evenings when uh, she came home, I let Nancy be my critic. Nancy? Yes, darling? Come here a minute, will you, honey? All right. What is it, darling? Listen to this. See if this doesn't pack a wallop. Mm -hmm. The mauler backed the killer into a corner. The illegal punches he had received gave him the fury of a beast. Coldly, deliberately, he took aim. He swung that vicious left hook. He hit the killer so hard the force of the impact snapped the ropes as if they were made of yarn. And the killer landed prone in the sixth row. Well, what do you think? Well... Don't, don't hesitate, baby. It's, it's terrific, I know. I just thought you might be able to add something. Well, don't you think you're making the mauler into too much of a superman? Superman? Hey, hey are you kidding? Well, Terry, do fighters actually break the ropes? Well... Uh, no, but this guy's the champ of champs. He's, he's the greatest ever. Oh, all right. But just have him hit the other man into the second row. Second row? Well, you ask what I thought. Yes, but you don't have to tear my characterization clear apart. Oh, all right, all right. Leave it in the sixth row. I will. And if you don't like to accept my suggestions, why ask for them? Oh, baby, I... I'm sorry. It's just that I feel about this book the, the same way Dumas must have felt about some of his masterpieces. Please understand, baby. Oh, Terry, I do, and I'm sorry. I've just been a little tired lately. Yeah, that hurt me. Nancy had been working hard. I wanted her out of that toy factory in Jersey and in our home where she belonged. So I really went to work winding up my book. I didn't bother Nancy with any more of the details. Yeah, it was a great day the day I finished it. I took it down to one of these manuscript typing services. Well, what is it? I saw your ad in the yellow section of the phone book. <laughs> is that the masterpiece under your arm? Yeah, that's it. But uh, first I want to know, how much do you charge? We charge 25 cents a page. How many pages does it run? Oh, about 600. That'll be $150. 150 yeah, that's a lot of dough. Well, you won't get it copied anywhere else any cheaper. 
And he won't stand a chance with the publisher unless you present it neatly typed. Yes, well, uh, all right. Yeah. Your name? Terry McGee. You, uh, like my title? The Manhattan Mauler? Intriguing. Your address? 79 West 103rd. Say, uh, you couldn't recommend a good publisher to me, could you? You'll find a mimeograph list of publishers on your left as you go out. Uh, uh, we usually like half now. What? Hey, the money. <laughs> you remember? Oh, uh, well, I'll give it all to you. Only I'll have to drop over and see my banker a moment. I'll, uh, I'll see that you get it. I tore home. Nancy had an emergency fund, which she'd been building up. Oh, Nancy was wonderful. The way she could make the money stretch. She'd been putting the money in a little blue teapot. When I opened it and counted it, I, I was surprised to find $150 and a few odd pennies. I went back to the manuscript service and paid them. When I came home, it was about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Nancy had just gotten home. She had a big package under her arm. Darling, what are you doing home this time of day? Uh, Terry, I, I, I quit over at the toy factory in Jersey. You quit? Uh-huh. Terry, we're going to have a baby. Uh, a baby? Uh-huh. Nancy, darling, uh -huh. oh, that's great. Oh, oh Terry, I, I'm oh, so afraid. There, there now, darling. <laughs> Sit down here. Now. But I am, Terry. Oh, slow down now. All right. Well, that's, be that's better. Here, blow your nose. <laughs> there. Sugar, this is the most wonderful news we can hope for. I don't know what you're afraid of. It's... Well, it's just that I had to quit my job. And... Honey, I, I didn't tell you. I finished my book. I'm all through, Sugar. Until my book's sold and the royalties start coming in, I'll, I'll pick up a little old job, anything from prison on up. Oh, Terry. Sure. Say, what was that big package under your arm? Oh, that. Oh, darling, that was the sweetest thing. A jumbo-sized Humpty Dumpty from the kids in the office. <laughs> well, wasn't that nice of them. <laughs> Terry, there's just one thing about the baby. Yeah, sugar? You know the money I've been putting away in the emergency fund? Why, uh, why, yes. I want you to take it over to the hospital and get my room. I want to have my baby at the hospital. I, I don't want to go to the welfare home. Well, uh, all right, sugar. I've had to cut corners pretty close to save that. I just want to be sure. Why, uh, I'll take care of it, I promise you. Sweet, you know what? What? Ever since I can remember, I wanted to be the husband of the most beautiful wife in the world. Oh, Terry. And mother. Oh, darling. And now that I have her, may the good Lord help me take care of her. We pause briefly from our story, The Manhattan Mauler, starring George Montgomery, to bring you an important message from your government. You young men who want to win your wings in the U.S. Air Force, pay attention to this. The next Air Force Aviation Cadet Pilot Training Class starts in July, and now is the time to get your application in. If you're unmarried, 20 to 26 and one-half years old, and have completed two years of college, or can pass an equivalent examination, you're eligible to apply. When accepted, here's what you'll have. You'll take a year's exciting training at one of the U.S. Air Force Aviation Cadet Training Bases. Then, after you have passed your course successfully, you'll be commissioned a second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force Reserve and you'll win your pilot's wings. And make a special note of this, men. You'll earn up to $336 a month after you have won your wings. This is your big opportunity. Get your application now at your local U.S. Air Force recruiting station or at your nearest Air Force base. The curtain rises on act two of The Manhattan Mauler, starring George Montgomery as Terry McGee, the boxer who turned author. Several months have passed. With Nancy home expecting the baby, and with his manuscript in the hands of the publishers, Terry tries to find work. What little odd jobs he could pick up went for food, rent, clothing, and special vitamins for Nancy. 
But the most important thing was that he still hadn't made enough money for the hospital down payment. In other words, the job situation wasn't all that it could have been. Yeah, you could underline that. Jobs were scarce. I went over and filed with a couple of employment agencies. When I didn't hear from them, I started looking on my own. And I ended up talking to the boss at the cab company who, uh, not so long ago, had begged me to stay on. And I was sure of something there. So now you're back asking for a job, eh, Terry? Well, I'm willing to lend my valuable services to you, if that's what you mean. Uh-huh. And I don't have to be president this time? <laughs> no. I suppose you'd even stir a hack for us, Terry. I'll tell you what. I'll put air in the tires if it means a job. Yeah, sure, I know. Well, I'm sorry, Terry. Things are slow. There just isn't anything. Yeah, that's the answer I get all over. Well, you shouldn't have left us, Terry. You'd have had a job now. Yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Well, if anything opens, I'll call you. Thanks. Say, didn't I see you in an ad in the papers uh, wearing a corset? Cut it. Cut it. <laughs> all right, all right, Terry. But I showed it to the wife. She thinks you got the body beautiful. I said can it. No, no, really. I was just thinking, if you're in need of a job, uh, why not try them again? Listen, I wouldn't take that job again if it if I was down to my last dime and walking barefoot. Well, anyway, that's what I told him. I'd been at the modeling agency all morning, trying to talk them into hiring me to pose for anything, even long flannels. The job situation was getting serious. And when I got home and talked to Nancy, I realized just how serious it was. Hello, darling. Hello, honey. Uh, any luck? No, no luck. Oh. oh, well, don't worry, Terry. We'll manage, I'm sure. What did the doctor say today? Oh, it's any time now. Any time? Uh-huh. Oh, and Terry, there must be some mistake. Yeah, what do you mean? The doctor's office called the hospital, and they don't have any record of a reservation for me. Oh. R remember I asked you to take that $150 over? Sure. Sure, there, there, there must be a mistake. I'll go over and check on it right now. I'm very sorry, Mr. McGee, but that's the rule of the hospital. We must have payment in advance. But I can pay you. I'm sure I can pay you. I'm sorry. We can't handle it that way. Now, there's the welfare home. My I'm wife just... doesn't want the welfare home. And I promised her that... Uh, you'll have to excuse me. Wait a minute. Listen. Just put our name down, will you? And give me a couple of hours. Well, I'll, I'll be back with the dough, I promise you. I went out of the hospital. Oh, that night air sure felt good. It cleared my head. Some way I had to raise that dough. Some way. Hey, the West Side Club. Why hadn't I thought of it? I rushed over there and faced Sammy Lane. Hello, Sammy. Oh, hello, kid. What's doing? Where you been? I've been writing my book, remember? Sammy, you gotta help me. I need a fight. Well, okay, kid. When? When can you get in shape? I can fight for you tonight. Ten... Are you kidding? I mean it, Sammy. Ah, but you're out of condition. You ain't fought for months. I don't need to be in condition to fight these palookas. I see me confident. Young friend has not lost any of his confidence. Sammy, give me a fight tonight, Sammy, please. But the card's filled. It's already started. Sammy. Huh? What's the matter, oh, Mike? Oh, trouble, Sammy. Yeah, what is it? We'll have to get a replacement for Jackie Miller tonight. Can't put a glove on. He's got the flu. Yeah, okay, Mike. Don't worry about it. Terry, you're a lucky Irishman. Go change your clothes. You're fighting right now. Five minutes. Yeah, I really appreciate this, Sammy. Well, uh, thank me. You're helping me out of a spot. You, uh, you know who you're fighting, don't you? No. Who is it? Dave Blaze, the same boy who flattened you last time, remember? <laughs> He's a cinch. Yeah, a cinch. He sure was. Now, listen, kid. He's improved 100%. Stay away from him and don't get mad in there. Not a chance. Say, what do you think you can get on me tonight? <laughs> you want to know? Yeah, of course I want to know. I can get 10 to 1. You won't last three rounds with this boy. Well, take it. D what do you mean? Look, I get 20 bucks for this fight, don't I? 25. All right. Lay it off for me. Get any odds you want, just so it all adds up to 150 bucks. Look, kid, I don't like to see you throw your money away. I said lay it off and hurry. You don't have much time. Uh, 
Uh, did you get it off all right? Yeah, kid. All you got to do is last three rounds. That's all, brother. So you better stay away from him. Uh, well, if it isn't the corset boy again. Hello, Smalley. Well, the last time you said that, I got that kisser. You're acquainted with the floor. Well, not tonight, Josephine. Not tonight. And now it's round one of the third preliminary tonight. Dave Blaze, one of the fanciest boys of his weight, moves in on the other boy. Terry McGee is the name of Blaze's opponent. Blaze is moving in now. He connects. A left, a right, a left. He is down. Referee is counting. One, two, three. Now McGee is on his feet again. Took some damaging blows there. Cut over his eye. Now that's the crowd. They don't like the way McGee is backpedaling. But Blaze has him now. Uh, left to the body. Uh, right to the head. He's going down. Oh, there's the bell for round one. You, uh, you all right, kid? Sure. Sure, I'm all right. Sure, you're all right. Kid, you got to stay away from him. Stay away. I don't like that. Don't mix with him. Don't mix him up, remember? Here's round two between Dave Blaze and Terry McGee. That booing is for McGee. He's backpedaling. It seems on the instructions of his handlers. Wait a minute. He's going to make a fight of it. McGee's going to make a fight of it. But Blaze has got him. A left. All right, another left. Well, that's all, brother. That's all, brother. I told you to stay away from him. That 25 bucks was gone the minute I laid it. Ah, he was lucky. Yeah, you might have lasted. Now look at you. Look at that face. Yeah, I guess I lost my head. Uh, you crazy Irishman. I don't know why I like you for it. Well, can it? Kid... You're in trouble, ain't you? Yeah? Who said so? Nobody said so, but, uh, how much do you need? Well, I, I need 150. Uh, here. Look, Sammy, I don't know when I can pay you back. Eh, uh, when you get rich on that book, you're right, and that's soon enough. I went over to the hospital and paid up. I thought about my book. I wondered why I hadn't heard from the publishers. It was such a great drama. How could they turn it down? I was pretty late when I got home, but Nancy was waiting up for me. Oh, Terry, what have they done to you? <laughs> you should see the other guy. I knew it. I had a feeling you were going over there to fight tonight. Oh, darling. Look, it's, it's all right, darling. I checked with the hospital, and it's all fixed now. Oh, Terry, that's wonderful. Oh, yes, and I almost forgot. There's a registered letter came for you, special delivery. A registered letter? Uh-huh. I'll get it. It's from a publishing house, Brooks and Holcamp. Brooks and Holcamp? Hey, that's where I submitted my book. Oh, here it is. Hey, maybe they've taken it. Maybe they're going to make a book of the month. Maybe... Dear Mr. McGee, we regret we will be unable to publish your manuscript to Manhattan Mauler. Oh, no. Hey, what's that? Something fell on the floor. Look, it, it's a check. A check for 500 bucks. Oh, Terry. I, well, 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 go ahead. Read yeah. on. Yeah, what was I? Oh, yes. However, we have turned uh, your manuscript over to World Feature Syndicate, with whom we are affiliated. They concur with us that this will make a great comic strip. A comic strip? Oh, Terry, that's wonderful. But, but it was so filled with tender drama, yes, darling. Yes, I that... know, darling. But more people read comic strips than anything else. Hey, maybe you're right. Ah, oh, the Manhattan Waller. I can see it now in the Tribune. And just think, darling, thousands of people having breakfast every morning with the Manhattan Waller. Yeah, maybe millions. Uh, sure, it's all right, sure it is. I'll not only write it, I'll, I'll, I'll draw it. You, you're what? Sure. Ever since I was a kid, I've wanted to be an artist. Curtain falls in the final act of the Manhattan Marlin. Our star, George Montgomery, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. Men in the regular army are going to school these days, and that's a hint to you high school graduates. If you want to continue your education while working in a worthwhile career, the regular army gives you this opportunity. Our soldiers are taking courses up through college level at the Armed Forces Institute, and it doesn't interfere with their job. You see, they take off-duty, correspondence, and self-study courses, courses and subjects which they have chosen themselves. 
and all it costs them is nominal registration fee. Our soldiers are receiving vocational training, too, worth many thousands of dollars. And you high school graduates may select the type of training you want. Yes, high school graduates, education plays a big part in the life of our soldiers. Why don't you talk it over at your local U.S. Army recruiting station this week? The man there will be glad to help you plan your career. And now back to the microphone, our star, George Montgomery, and our producer. Here it is time for a curtain call, and I'd like you to meet our star, my very good friend and neighbor, George Montgomery. First, George, congratulations on a very fine performance. Thank you very much, C.P. I'm proud to have been called to do this for my old branch of the service, the Air Force. And how's the brand new papa getting along with the new little ranch boss? Oh, you mean Melissa Ann? <laughs> <laughs> She's fine, C.P. And uh, I might add in very good voice. How could she miss having such a talented mother like Dinah Shore as coach? Well, uh, Dinah's coaching at this stage is in keeping her quiet. <laughs> but we think she's the most wonderful baby in the whole world regardless. I'll go along with you there. She is a sweet baby. And by the way, she looked wonderful rocking in that hand-carved cradle you made for her. I'm glad you liked it, uh, C.P. You know, woodworking is my hobby. You made most of the furniture in your home, didn't you? Yes. Now you can start making that break front since your latest picture, Lula Bell, is finished. Your first Columbia release, isn't it? Yes, uh, Ben Bogus production. You know, I might add that I really enjoyed working with Dottie Lamore in it, too. Who wouldn't? I saw the picture, and I thought it was excellent. Well, thanks for the nice compliment. I only hope the theater goers like it as well. It can't miss. You know, C.P., uh, while we're talking about feminine leads, I'd like to hand a verbal bouquet to Miss Sammy Hill, who played Nancy McGee in our story today. She's one of the best radio actresses in Hollywood. And I know she will appreciate this gesture by you. Well, time for me to be running along now, C.P. Looks like I'm going to miss my haircut today. <laughs> I'll have to pick that up the first thing in the morning. But I'll uh, probably see you around Jimmy Sale's general store in Greater Encino. But uh, look, before I go, C.P., what's the playbill for tomorrow? Or, uh, I mean, next week. Uh, next week, we present a comedy starring Lee Bowman as a young bank president and hospital director named Jeff Randall in our story titled The Psychological Approach. Jeff develops a special approach while pursuing an ardent affair of his heart. The unwilling object is the hospital's new lady doctor, a child psychologist who refuses to take adult cases, especially Jeff's. Yeah, there should be some interesting complications. Well, CP, I'll be listening. Goodbye now. Goodbye, George. Join us next week, won't you, ladies and gentlemen, when we present a delightful comedy, The Psychological Approach, starring the popular motion picture actor, Lee Bowman. Until next week, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> George Montgomery appeared to the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The story was by Rich Hall, orchestra directed by Eddie Scrivanek. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. This is Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>